What's up for Wednesday? <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. I got electric guitar staff today. <laughs> a little head banging in the morning. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome to work Wednesday. Yeah. Where we have brought out the staff. That's what we're going to talk about today, obviously. We found this beautiful, natural. Show them the. Oh, yeah, this has an eye. Actually, yeah. has an eye hole at the top. An eye hole staff. You look through it with your eyes. Oh, it's so wrong. This staff we found while hiking in the White Tank Mountains. West, that way, about five, six miles. And uh, we always look for cool pieces of wood when we go hiking with our doggos. Yep. So we found this great staff. And I was thinking about this awesome staff today. And it made me uh, think about Moses' staff, mm. which is what we're going to talk about today. So you're going to turn your Bibles to Exodus 4. And as you do that, you know, it's probably not the most famous. I think Psalms 23, people say, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. His rod and his staff that comfort me. That might be a more famous, like, staff verse in the Bible. Yeah. Also, one of the more famous parenting <laughs> verses that my parents took to heart. Spare the rod, Spare the, rod the staff, the you spoil the child. So that's found in Proverbs. Amen. 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 I got spanked. I got spanked. But this staff is an even more important staff. It's going to teach us about just something today, things that we have at our disposal that God uses in a mighty way. So I think that's all the intro I have for the staff. We're going to put the staff right on our laps here. All right. We're going to read Exodus 4. Verses 1 through 5. And we start right here. We start really, we find Moses is standing in front of the burning bush. Uh, chapter 3 is Moses uh, speaking and witnessing the burning bush, God's presence falling into the bush. And uh, so he's standing in the burning bush. He's on Mount Horeb, also known famously as Mount Sinai. And the scene is set in a rugged, desolate wilderness. So here we go. Verse 1. But Moses protested again. What if... That's a big question. What if? Hey, stop it. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground. I don't want to throw it on the ground because it will break it. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. A snack. A snack. Ah, we have lots of those here in Arizona. Moses jumped back. Whew. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. You want to grab its tail? <laughs> I don't know if I have the head or you have the tail. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, so Moses reached out and grabbed it, and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. And this is the end. Verse 5. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, really has appeared to you. Wow, what a great story. Right at the end of his burning bush, then he, then he does something truly miraculous with, with a basic shepherd's staff. He tells, he commands most to throw it on the ground, it turns into a snake. That would be a miraculous sign, would it not? A miraculous sign and wonder? So... As we dive into this, the key moment in this passage is when God asked Moses to cast his staff onto the ground. This simple object, a shepherd's staff, is a symbol of Moses' identity, he was a shepherd, and livelihood. When it turns into a serpent, it signifies transformation and reveals God's ability to use ordinary elements to manifest his extraordinary power. Mm. Isn't that cool? So the theme of divine power seen as simple everyday objects, which is used throughout the Bible. I mean, we see that with David using a sling and stones and for Samuel. We see that with Jesus taking just basic loaves of bread and fish from the sea and feeding multitudes, thousands. In Matthew, I think it's Matthew 14. So each instance demonstrates God working through what appears, this is important, appears to be insufficient or unremarkable so that's what, like a shepherd's staff, insignificant and unremarkable, to reveal his providence and might. God often uses what we have at hand to achieve his purposes, making this passage a powerful reminder for us today. 
Many people might feel inadequate or ill-equipped for the tasks they believe God is calling them to do. Have you often felt that? Uh, all the time. And what's interesting is the start of this passage begins with those just killer, that killer two words that we ask ourselves, what if? Well, what if they don't listen to me? Well, what if, what if it doesn't go the way I think it's going to go? Well, what if I don't have enough money? Well, what if I, I don't have enough time? You know, our lives are plagued with that question. And I think that's so powerful that God's word is revealing that even Moses, a titan of the Bible, the guy who delivered the Israelites from it, Egypt, he's asking those very same questions. Well, what if God, what if they don't believe me? What if, you know, they're not persuaded by me? So I think it's a really cool passage, even today for us. So just briefly in closing, I would love for you to think about your daily grind. We all have one. Or just daily moments with your family. And just like Moses' staff transforming, God's power can turn your ordinary tasks into something extraordinary. Trust that your talents and resources are enough for God's incredible things. And I think that's really important because... I often get discouraged sometimes. Well, oh, what if what if they don't like it? Or, or what if they don't like my new song? Or, or, or what if it doesn't sound good? And it's like, no, no, no. Mm. Those aren't the questions. We, we, we have in our abilities, our ta- time, talents, and our treasures that God gave each one of us. He gave us each a staff. He gave us each a, a, a guitar. He gave us each a paintbrush. Yeah. And he can take that ordinary thing and make it extraordinary in the blink of an eye. You just have to trust them. Well, I think that's why it's so important to, is I do this a lot. I'll, I'll compare what I, you know, what the Lord's given me compared to someone else and think like, well, God, like, what am I supposed to do with this? It's not as much or it's not as maybe wonderful as what you've given or gifted somebody else with. And I think, mm. you know, it's true. Like, it really does steal that joy and it often can rob, I think, God working in a truly miraculous way in our lives when we are looking somewhere else and what is mm. in someone else's hands. It's like, no, God wants to use what he's given you in your hand. And right. it may seem insignificant or simple or just ordinary, but true. he can do something miraculous with it if you're obedient. I truly believe he can use anything. Yeah. Like if you're a delivery truck, if you're an Amazon truck driver, he can use your wheels and your vehicle to witness to the masses. If, Absolutely. If you're an artist, he can use your paintbrush. He can use your wheel. Yeah. to do something truly incredible and transform lives. Yeah. And that's important for all of us to remember this morning, that God has given you a talent, given you something that you may even consider ordinary. And uh, I just want you to trust God to use everything that he's given as something that could be turned into something extraordinary, something that can be used to further his kingdom. Yeah. So that's a great reminder. Thank you. Great share. Yeah, <laughs> I want to compare ourselves. So yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us through Moses, through Exodus, and your word, God, that the simple tools that you've given us can turn into something truly incredible and have vast significance in your kingdom. So thank you. Thank you for giving us all an identity in you and talents and skills that you can use. So, Lord, we give today to you. We give our talents, our time, and our treasure to you. Pray for all those that are watching online. Meet all their needs wherever they are. And uh, let us all have a blessed day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see who's on. Say it. Woo, woo, woo.